Okay, we're back at HPE Discover 2023. The Cube's continuous coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. I'm here with Rob Strecce. I'm Dave Vellante. John Furrier is actually in DC doing Mongo. So we got a lot going on on theCUBE.net. Ryan King is here. He's the Senior Director of Global Hardware Partner Ecosystems for Red Hat. And Rocco La Vista is back. He's the Vice President for Worldwide Sales and go to market lead for GreenLake at HPE. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much, I uh, really appreciate it to be here. You were here last year, Ryan, we're talking about when you guys sort of announced the partnership with, with GreenLake, now we're seeing the whole thing coalesce. And so it's awesome to see the progress. Give us the update, what's new? Yeah, I mean, if I just rewind from last year, we were coming into it really, you know, talking about our bona fides and talking about how OpenShift had reached 48% of the container platform market. And then this January, we announced that it hit one billion in ARR. Yeah. And then to come into this week and to be recognized by HPE as their global technology partner of the year is just amazing. It's the last award given. It kind of feels like best picture at the Oscars. Uh, I won't talk so long you play the music, um, <laughs> but I will say like it's a uh, recognition of the great work we've done over the past year. But again, it's just a milestone in our 22 year um, partner history between the two companies. And it, we're going to do more and better every year. And uh, we're looking forward to the next year of innovation. So, okay, so that's what this is, right? Partner of the year. That's it here, yeah. And in, uh, in solid crystal, uh, one of our Red Hatters will bring that back to corporate headquarters and uh, place on the shelf. And probably to hit weight, they're going to have to like throw their shoes out to, make, uh, to get their luggage on. What does it take <laughs> to win that award? Hey, for me, it's an easy one, right? For HPE GreenLake, we don't get to do cloud without Red Hat in the boat with us. And so the partnership is so key in that way. I mean, that cloud operating model, cloud native application development, containerized platforms, that is why they win this award. In my opinion, they should win it every year because you're going to see the proof from our joint customers and what they're able to do with Red Hat and HPE GreenLake. You know, it's interesting, on the keynotes, we didn't hear a ton about cloud native. Is it because it's kind of just assumed now, it's in there, when we talk about cloud, it's cloud native and customers are sort of getting used to it? I think so, I mean, I think when I look at it, like, um, you know, last year we were just talking about things landing on GreenLake, right? Mm -hmm. So we said, hey, OpenShift Container Platform is upcoming, you know, it was going to come, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we say subsequent quarter. Um, the rest of that year, we landed uh, OpenShift, we landed um, Ansible Automation Platform, we landed uh, RHEL, so things are there, so kind of to your point. And then we built upon that. So we added the um, ISV optimized cloud module version to that. And that took what um, is kind of just general availability into pre-configured capabilities for it. So easy to click and deploy, small, medium, large type uh, you know, for our customers. And that's really a recognition of like, think of it as like you're saying cloud paradigm. Like okay, so now it's like instance paradigm in like pre-configured ways of deploying these, uh, these platforms yeah, and it, on GreenLake. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, well it would seem that this is actually ties in really well with the edge to cloud message that we've been hearing as well in the fact that, you know, really if you're going to build cloud native apps, in Red Hat is everywhere, right? So is that, was that the thinking with the partnership and how you guys see that as well? Well, so while we said you didn't hear a lot about cloud native, think about the continuum and what we're discussing about edge to cloud mm -hmm. platform. The biggest next challenge for our customer base, while they're still trying to optimize their data centers, move out, move to public cloud, the next biggest challenge is optimizing at the edge. You need to have that cloud native operating model at the edge. Red Hat being everywhere at the edge, edge with HPE GreenLake and what we're going to solve for the customers there is that next place that at scale is where our customers are asking us to look at so super cloud native. Yeah, yeah. think it's about exactly. that. That's what we're talking about. Super maybe that's why, yes, because maybe. clouds, people well, think, okay, cloud, maybe public cloud, uh, moving beyond that, cloud is expanding out to the edge. Yeah, and right? we, we have progressive kind of layers of edge, so we think about like near edge and what we can do with like OpenShift after that. Last year we were doing a lot of work around the EL8000, yes. and what we can do with OpenShift, that configuration. It's a four node configuration, mm -hmm. so we're able to put a four node cluster on it, do a factory install, ship this out with GPUs on it, be able to do that you know, inference or training at the edge. Um, we're going to build on that. We have Red Hat Device Edge that can go out to the far edge and the capabilities that we can deliver there with including Ansible. So, um, yes, yeah, so we've got a lot to come. And then I would like to tie it back to Private Cloud Enterprise and the announcements we've made this week. Well, that's right. And so with Private Cloud Enterprise, we make it easy to deploy 
Red Hat OpenShift container platform. And going back to this edge theme, if you think about it, if I was an application developer, I'd want to spend my time focused on developing the best application I can. And based on some checklist items, data sovereignty, gravity, SLA, cost, latency, I want to deploy that app in the most consistent way that I can based on where it makes sense. And the fact is, where transactions and data lives is where you do business and that's usually at the edge. And so at, if we can simplify how you deploy containerized platforms on HPE, private cloud enterprise, we're simplifying how customers operate with consistency at the edge in their core, which is their data center and colo, inclusive of the public cloud, because there's still lots of great value that you can get out of some of the automation and tooling that's out there and we want to deliver that hybrid cloud experience across that continuum for our customers, and we do that with Red Hat. So paint a picture of what, what you're seeing from customers these days. What's the typical customer look like? What's the spectrum look like? Can you give us a, a sense of that? Yeah, I mean, if I, if I, if I look at uh, a really popular industry that they want us to solve for uh, across that continuum, I look at retail. They absolutely operate at the edge. That's where their customers live. That's where their transactions are, are occurring. They typically have hundreds, if not thousands of stores. They have multiple data center locations and they've gotten used to doing things in the public cloud. But they've said, hmm, for me, I live on razor thin margins selling products at retail. I know it's highly competitive. Look how many of them have gone out of business. And so they have to optimize that IT operating model, and they do that with consistency across yeah. the full stack that we deliver and are helping them deliver. Yeah, I mean, I think you hit on a, a good point there, which is, I, I just want to tie in, which is the, the cloud operating model. And that would seem to tie back to private cloud enterprise and the pay-as-you-go methodology. Obviously Red Hat has other partners and stuff and is in that business already. So that would seem like a really strong fit for exactly what you're talking about is people want to pay OpEx in certain places for that. Is that really the problem you're solving with these customers, joint customers? I, I look at it even more simply put that customers are tired of having hardware contracts and software ELAs that are mismatched in timing and mismatched in capacity and mismatched in even life cycling the, the platform together. And so what we do with HPE GreenLake through our marketplace is we're able to closely tie the two elements together, the maintenance contracts, the renewals, and simplify for customers with the flexibility of scale up, scale down and pay as you go. And I think you 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 know you bring like that compute layer to say, hey, we can put an infrastructure uh, anywhere, right? Um, across cloud to edge, um, and that is going to be a great enabler for our customers. And they're looking for consistency of platform experience across that because they know they just can't place all their compute in one place, right? They need to have a distributed pattern, and they but what they want is consistency across it both at the infrastructure layer as well as the platform layer, and together that's what we provide. And, and, and they is so diverse. Yes. Right, I mean, you think about retail, then you go into telco, but so you guys are, have to pro provide a horizontal platform. You're not going to customize for every industry. This is what we're seeing, right? So like, um, you know, if we talk customers, we, we were mentioning specific customers back at, you know, our CUBE interview at, at uh, Red Hat uh, Summit a few weeks back, but like just speaking generalities, like in manufacturing, global manufacturing company, they're deploying, you know, rel in a virtualized environment into their factory, um, which is, you know, a near edge use case. Um, we have in the telco space for their core networking and what they're doing with OpenShift container platform to optimize and modernize applications in that space. We're seeing the same modernization uh, cloud native application in the FSI space. In the government space, we have a customer that's doing something in e-government around application modernization, specifically on OpenShift. So really we can walk industry from you know, all of those and say that like, they're all taking their particular journey on the hybrid cloud uh, you know, path towards fully automated infrastructure and application platform. But you have to do it with consistency. Yeah. The fact is, is that if you 
deploy and operate at the edge one way, which is at a very large scale, and you run and operate your data centers in another, and the fact is, is if you consume one public cloud or another, it's still a different type of snowflake that you've created in your operating model. The expertise that you have to hire, the cost structure, the different tooling, that becomes a complex and expensive value prop for IT to continue and with HPE GreenLake, with private cloud enterprise, the standards that we're driving with cloud modules, and then partnering with Red Hat, we're hitting the mark for our customers across all those. I, I'd like to build on that if I yeah. could. Uh, we have a no snowflake policy <laughs> in terms of how we work with ah, the system. I love it. And, uh, ah. and so you could think <laughs> of snowflakes as kind of two I things, <laughs> right? Like unique, right? Not everything should be unique, right? That's right. where we start, right? It's it's funny, we'll be at Snowflake Summit next week. Oh right? my God. It's yeah. almost Snowflake Summit, we love no Snowflake. Offense. But, yes. but, it, right, but I always yeah. hear this all the time, it's a funny name when you think about it because yeah. you know, you're, everybody's trying to standardize on their platforms. I mean, I've been on yeah. just like a mission around this because like we start with like no Snowflakes, people go, okay, fewer patterns. I'm like, that's not just it. Right. I go, it's also about product life cycle and that like these things can't melt, right? They need to be persisted in terms of like, we need to work together that like, nightly builds of this stuff go in and are actually done in a CI environment and stay fresh too, right? Yeah. So there's also its uniqueness and then you know the age of it that need to be you know squashed in terms of no, no snowflakes. Yeah, no yeah. offense uh, to the company. Uh, no, we, no. we also got to be smart. You got you got to meet where customers where they're at. This is not an overnight transition. And, and one of the the things that we see with customers adopting public cloud is they see this great operating model, and then unless you were born in the public cloud. You just can't get there that easily. So you have to start someplace in cleaning up your own organization, optimizing the operating model of your own organization before you would even consume public cloud to take advantage of some of the technologies we bring forth is our common goal. Meet customers where they're at, help them with modern infrastructure, then help them with the cloud operating model thereafter. This is where telco gets interesting. Because yeah. telco, you got this hardened stack that's fossilized, and it's, it's getting disaggregated. The cloud is coming in, the telcos are like, eh, some of them are leaning in, maybe for their BSS systems, but, but, but there's an opportunity here to actually transform telco in Absolutely. a new way that is not just public cloud, cloud first, et cetera, it's, it's a new model that's emerging and they're, they're so far behind that transformation from the traditional data center, but there's a lot that they can learn from it, I think. Yep. That they're having to deal with. 50 years of legacy operations, and yeah. how do you modernize that? On top of adding new services that are important to their customer base. Like, I, I love autonomous driving and the models that are coming out of that and why the edge is so important for that. Because for autonomous driving to optimize the AI model, it's not like an overnight batch run, you know, provide the feedback, reload the cars up with the yeah, model. Yeah, yeah, no way. <laughs> if you can't do that real time, how are you ever going to respond to pedestrian, traffic, weather conditions? And so that to me is the best use case of within telco that takes advantage of a, a very specific workload when I thought, think about autonomous driving. That's going to help society overall. You drive a Tesla? No, no, not yet. Don't take your hands off the wheel, it'll yell I'll, at you. I'll tell you what, I'm not, <laughs> also not getting rid of my V8s. Those are going to be a dinosaur. Yeah. I, I do drive a Tesla, but I, because I've just uh, been so enamored by the whole deep learning process and where it's come from in the early days and just yeah. wanted to have my hands on it. And yeah. it's, uh, it's exciting in many ways. Uh, but I would just get back to like the telco piece. Um, at Summit we showed like how um, we have a sustainability trend that we're looking at in telco and specifically around like the optimization of that workload. There's so much work just to, to lower the power profile of even like what 5G looks like out in the real world that will be truly impactful. And to deliver that like back to like doing this in a cloud native way where you can adopt enhancements that are being done on silicon that's just being released all the way into something that makes it into a cell phone, a cell tower is pretty amazing to see us kind of accelerate that from concept yeah. to actually something that, you know, it's now you know, on your phone, so right. to speak. Yeah, I, I think, in, again, back to Dave's point, and I actually brought this up to Fidelma, that I haven't heard a lot about open source at the conference, and I think a lot of the stuff that you're 
uh, Fidelma is doing in her group in sustainability, which was interesting because I tied it back to what some of the stuff that Red Hat is doing with LF Energy, which is how do I have the right workload run in the right place at the right sustainability cost, so power, cooling, things of that nature that Red Hat's working on in the open source community, ties back to where actually HP is, HPE is working in the CTO's office too. So it also, to your points on Edge, I think some of the announcements around single node, Edge, yep. OpenShift, for instance, seems to fit everything that not only telcos have to do, but retail and others that are looking to do and bring those cloud native. Well, and, and you know, speaking of the platform, we've released our sustainability dashboard. We're putting our money where our mouth is to prove to customers that using the HP GreenLake cloud platform, you can reach or monitor and see how you're meeting your goals. Look, executives today have KPIs, bonuses based on meeting sustainability goals. Yep. And so if they can't measure and, and show the results, a lot of unhappy people. <laughs> <laughs> and even, it comes up to a macroeconomic level, you can actually look at whole countries and say, what does 5G mean to their energy profile, yeah. right? And that's, that's meaningful and a you know, big ask for sustainability. Okay, where are we at today? Like, what can I get uh, from, from GreenLake that's Yes, yeah, so OpenShift is available on GreenLake, Red Hat, Ansible, automation platform is available, um, uh, so is RHEL, um, so all is available. Um, no, all the flavors of RHEL are available on, I have, on, on, uh, on HP GreenLake. Easy to deploy, the blueprints are there, all the flexibility you would expect. We're driving kind of the automation you know, blueprints for customers so that when you buy PCE, Private Cloud Enterprise, those blueprints are there so you can easily deploy anything from Red Hat and then tie that together in the consumption model, the flexibility, the pay as you go, the scale up, scale down, elasticity. That's what customers expect from us right and now. And then more, more, more. Go yeah, ahead. I would just add, so like, I think with PC in particular, like we're designing that experience with customers right now, and so um, we're talking a lot here, but what we really want to do is listen to customers and have them bring that to us. Uh, and they, we want them to challenge us, right, around like where we can take this and this experience together. Um, we know that, that the pattern of GreenLake and that infrastructure capability is going to be endemic to a lot of customers, and them being able to use that on a platform like OpenShift or RHEL or with Ansible, um, we think it's a killer combo. And in co-creating with an ecosystem. Co-creation is a huge theme yeah, at absolutely. Red Hat and with yeah. our ecosystem, so I appreciate that. Good. Guys, thanks so yeah. much, I appreciate yeah. you coming. Thank you. Right. you guys. See you again. Thank Good to see you again, yeah. You. All right, keep it right here. Rob and I will be back with the, the, one of the shining stars in the HPE portfolio, Phil Mottram, who runs Aruba. Be right back. Thank you.